welcome to the Clot Thickens Level Designer video tutorial. I'm going to start off with the default level. I've got the bacteria, which is a player character, two cells, and three oxygen bubbles. Now before I edit this level, let's play it so we get a better understanding of the game. I'll click on play above. Now without me doing anything, the bacteria is circling the cell. When the bacteria fully encircles the cell, it infects it, which is why the cell has changed color. Now the goal is to infect every cell in a level to complete it, and as a bonus, collect all three oxygen bubbles. Now there's two things I can do as a player. One, I can change the direction of motion around the cell. I can do that by hitting the right mouse button, like this, or by hitting the left or right shift keys on the keyboard, like this. Now the second thing I can do is jump, which is really important if I want to get to another cell. And I can do that by hitting the left mouse button, like that, or by hitting the space bar, like that. Now what's important is that I don't miss, otherwise the bacteria falls to his death and I've got to restart the level. So I've got to make sure I time my jumps. I'm just going to complete this level. Here we go. Now we'll talk about this level complete screen a little bit later on, so I'm just going to bypass that. So now we're ready to edit the level. Let's start by adding new objects to the level. There are two kind of objects we can add, cells and enemies. So let's add another red blood cell. To do so, I'm going to left click on the cell in the right menu, drag it into the level, and let it go. Now there are four kinds of cells in total that I can add, and I can cycle through them with these arrows on either side. So let's take a look at the second kind of cell I can add. It's a moving red blood cell. I'm going to left click, drag it in, and when this plays, it's going to move along that path. Now the third kind of cell that I can add is a shrinking cell. When the bacteria jumps on that cell, it's going to start to shrink. When the bacteria jumps off, it'll stop. The danger, of course, is that it could shrink down to nothing and the bacteria could fall to its doom. Now finally, the fourth cell is a moving shrinking cell. It shrinks like I mentioned before and it moves along that path. So if I play right now, you'll see that those cells are moving and when I jump on this cell, the shrinking cell is going to start to shrink until I jump off. Alright, so let's add some enemies. So like the cells, we can left click on an enemy and drag it into the scene. This is an antibody enemy. And when I drag it in, it moves along this path when it plays. You'll also see a trail that it'll leave, which allows a player to be more strategic in planning jumps. So I'll, I'll left click and drag in a few more of these antibody enemies. Here we go, we got a few in there now. All right, and now I'm gonna cycle to the second enemy, which is an antibiotic enemy, and it attaches to a cell and rotates around it. So when I left click, you'll see the cells have highlighted and I can snap it to any one of those cells. So I'll put it onto that cell and that moving cell. Now note if I kind of just let it go here, it'll just snap to the nearest cell that it can find. So if I play right now, you'll see it's rotating around the cells and certainly what's interesting is the path it takes when it's rotating around moving cells. Now, what I have to be careful of is as a player, if I get hit by the enemy, it spells doom for the bacteria as well. So I'll try to avoid doing that. So let's just stop that there. I've added a lot of objects to the level, so I'm going to delete some. To delete an object, I hover over the object till I see the crosshair cursor. I left click and I drag the object to the trash, which will highlight green. And when I let go, the object is deleted. I can do the same thing for enemies and grab the enemy, drag to the trash, let go and delete. I'll do that for a few more enemies here. Same with the circular enemies. I can drag and delete those. Now, if I grab a cell, that has an enemy circling it, and I drag that to the trash, it will delete the cell and the enemy around it. Now, one thing that's important is I cannot delete the player. That would defeat the purpose of playing the game. I also cannot delete the cell the player is on. So if I try doing that, it will just snap back in place. Now, what I could do is move the player and then delete the cell. I also cannot delete the oxygen bubbles. Those three need to remain because they're a part of completing the level. Now, I don't like the layout of the objects in this level, so I'm going to change their positions. Now, to do that, I'm going to hover over an object, and when I see the crosshair cursor, I'm going to left click, drag the object to a new position, and let it go. So I'm going to move some cells around to try and make this maybe a more engaging level. Now, when I go to change the position of a moving cell, when I left click on it and move it, I'm changing the starting position of its move. I can also left click on its anchor point at the end to change its ending position for the move. Now I'm also going to move these linear antibodies 
in the way of my jumps between the cells to add some challenge. And I'm going to move this circular enemy from that red blood cell to that shrinking cell. And then finally, I'm going to move these oxygen bubbles to places where hopefully I can collect them. So I can then play that level uh, and see whether I can complete it, how challenging it is, whether I want to change any positions. So I'll stop that. And there is one final move I can make. I can change the position of the bacteria. So if I left click on the bacteria and I move it, you can see that its ghost appears on the cells that it can move to. So I can let it go and snap it to that cell or to that cell or to that shrinking cell. But I think I'll move it over here. And I can continue playing the game and moving objects around until I get a level that I'm satisfied with. Another thing I can do with some objects is resize them. If I hover near the edge of a cell, I'll get a linear cursor. If I left click, hold and drag, I can make that cell larger or smaller. I can also do the same thing with the cell that the bacteria is on, making it larger or smaller, and the bacteria will sit on that cell. Now, if I do that with a cell that has a circular enemy around it, it will also resize a circular enemy accordingly. Now, I can also resize the path of a circular enemy. I can left click and hold it and make it larger or make it smaller, which is more of a threat when the bacteria is on that cell. Also, I can make it large enough that I could left click and hold another circular enemy and place it on that same cell. And I could also do that once again and resize that to create quite a challenge around that cell. Now let's assume I'm happy with this level, but I wish I could change the cell types. For example, I wish this large red blood cell was a large shrinking cell. Now one solution is I go to the right menu, find the shrinking cell, left click, drag it in, resize it, it's about the size that I want, remove the red blood cell, and put the shrinking cell in its place. Now this becomes a lot more work if a cell has a whole bunch of circular enemies around it, or if it's a moving cell and I've changed its position. So we've created the ability to change a cell type in place. When I hover over a cell, I see an icon. If I click on that icon, it'll change the cell type to that new cell type. In this case, that's the icon for a moving shrinking cell. If I click it again, I get a red blood cell. When I click it again, it'll cycle through and I'll get a moving red blood cell. So I'll put that back to a shrinking cell. I'll change this cell to be a red blood cell. And I'll change this moving cell to be a moving shrinking cell. Now it has retained the path that I had for the red blood cell previously. So it makes it very convenient. You may have noticed that these linear antibody enemies have anchor points and we can move them to change the path of that enemy and create more variability in the level. Now first, I'm just gonna remove a couple of enemies here so that it's not quite as cluttered. Here we go. And now let's work with these two enemies. So I can left click and drag the enemy itself to change the starting position, and then left click and drag on the anchor points to change the path. And I can do that for both of these enemies right now. And then let's see how that plays. So when I hit play, the one thing you may notice is that the longer the path, the more, the faster the speed of the enemy along that path. And so that's going to make it interesting to try and time my jumps to try not to hit those enemies. Now let's look at the antibiotic enemies that are circling cells. We can edit their parameters to introduce variability in their motion. The first thing we can do is click on the arrows on the path to change the direction of motion. The next thing we can do is click on the enemy and drag them along the path to change their starting position. Now let's play that and see. Now they're no longer moving in unison. One more thing we can do to add variability in a level is to change the individual speeds of enemies. We can do so by hovering over an enemy, which brings up its speed indicator, and then hover over the bars and left click to select one bar for the slowest speed, two bars for normal, three for faster, and four for fastest. We'll leave this enemy with the fastest speed. Now if we go to the antibody enemy on top here, let's select the slowest speed. Now to show the speed difference, let's look at these circular enemies and make sure their directions are the same, and let's start them both in the highest position. Now let's make the top one faster and the bottom one slower. Now let's play and take a look at the level. You can see the differences in speeds in all of these enemies. 
We can also modify a level by changing its global settings. In the right menu, we have three settings, background, game speed, and level zoom. We can change the background by using the arrow keys to select from six different ones. I'm gonna choose the blue one. Now the game speed is set to healthy, which is normal. I could decide to make the level a bit easier by reducing that game speed with the arrows to lethargic, and that will play slower. Now note that the enemies still retain their individual speeds, but it's slowed down by the overall game speed. I can also use the arrows to increase the speed to distressed for more challenging gameplay, or increase it to feverish for very challenging gameplay. I'm gonna bring that back down to healthy. Now I can also change the level zoom, which increases the size of the level. By going to the maximum zoom, I can add in more cells and more enemies to create more complex levels. Conversely, I can also change the level zoom to be smaller, and I'll get rid of some enemies and cells here. I can make it smaller so I can create a tighter level that might be, for example, a more beginning level for a game. Now that we're done with the editing operations of the level designer, let's look at the file operations. They'll allow me to create a new level, to save a level so I can keep it and share it with my friends, and load a level so I can play it, continue working on it, or modify a level that's been shared with me. So let's create a new level. To do so, I'm going to left click on the new button. Now I've got a warning letting me know the current level is not saved and will be lost if I continue. Now I could say no and not create a new level but let's say yes, and now I'm starting with the default level. Now I can edit this level. Let's assume I get to a point where I'll either like the level as it is, or I wanna work on it later on. That means I should save it. To save a level, I'm gonna left click on the save button. Now I get a warning letting me know that the level is gonna be saved using a default file name. And if that default file name already exists, it'll append a version number to it. It's also gonna save the file to a default browser save directory. Now, I've changed my browser preference settings, so it will ask me where to save the file. It also will allow me to change the file name. So I'm gonna hit OK, and I'm gonna change the file name to temp. Now, it's important that the file name, file name ends in .tct. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and I could continue working on it. But let's assume I wanna work on another level that I've already saved. So to do so, I'm gonna load that level. I'm gonna left click on the load button. I'm gonna find the level, let's say this one called one of each, because it contains one of each kind of cell and one of each kind of enemy. I'll then choose that and that level will be now loaded and I can work on it. Next, let's look at how we can play and replay a level. Now currently the replay functionality is grayed out because there is no replay for this level. So to play the level, let's left click on the play button, and now we can use the right mouse button or the left or right shift keys on the keyboard to change the direction of movement around the cell. And we can use the left mouse button or space bar to jump. So let's complete this level. We got a couple of cells left here. And I got one more. Let's avoid that enemy. All right, here we go. So I've completed the level. I've collected one out of the three oxygen bubbles. It's taken 24 seconds and three jumps. So I'm gonna save this replay by left clicking on the save replay button and it will store it to a file which will include the level and the replay. So I'm gonna rename this one of each replay one. One, and I'm gonna store that. Now I can retry the level and see if I can do better by left clicking on the retry button. And now I can play it now let's see if I can complete the level again here. I got a couple left here. Here we go. And I've got one more cell. I want to avoid that enemy. And I've completed it. So I've got one of the three oxygen bubbles collected, 12 seconds, and three jumps. Now I can compare it to the last replay I had, which was 24 seconds, three jumps, and one bubble. So it is better. So I could store this replay if I wanted, or I can retry again to do better. For now, I'm just gonna quit out of here. So I stored the last replay, so the replay functionality is now available. So if I left click on replay, I can watch the last replay I've stored. And 
that's it. To change the volume levels of the music or sound effects, left click on the musical note and then left click and drag on the bars to increase or decrease the corresponding volumes. If you'd like some help about a particular level designer topic or function, or you'd like to contact us, just left click on the help button, and then you can left click on the particular topic to get more information. For example, how to play a level or how to change global game settings. You can also click on this link to see this video tutorial. And you can click on the credits to see who's worked on this level designer. Finally, you can click on contact us where you can report a bug, or leave a comment, or leave a suggestion. For example, I'd like to see multiplayer. Now before you submit, please make sure to read our terms and conditions. We do collect some information, for example, an automatic screenshot of the level, an automatic capture of the level file and any replays if they exist, and some anonymous metadata about your system and software. Now we collect these so we can replicate bugs and fix them and better understand your comments and suggestions. Now please make sure to read the freedom privacy policy. There's a link here below. Now I'm gonna submit this suggestion and when I do, it'll submit. If there are errors in submission, it'll let us know. Otherwise, it'll let us know that the submission was complete. Now we look forward to your bugs, your comments and your suggestions. Finally, you may have noticed the submit button at the top right of the level designer. Now our goal is not only to allow you to make great levels and share them with your friends, but also share them with us, with the possibility of having them included in a future The Cloth Thickens game. Now I've got this level, I've got a replay that shows I can complete it and infect all of the cells, and I'm gonna submit this level. So I'm gonna left click on submit, but there's a problem. Even though I've shown I can complete the level with this replay and infect all the cells, I also have to show that I can collect all three oxygen bubbles. Now, I could play this level over and over again until I do, but I've already stored a level that has this. So I'm gonna load that level. I've called it replay two, and I'm gonna replay it for you so you can see. So I'll left click on replay. You can see I've infected the first cell. I've jumped and collected an oxygen bubble. I've collected another one on the turnaround on that cell, another one on the third cell, which I'm now infecting, and finally the fourth cell. Now, you can see I've actually completed the level and collected all three oxygen bubbles. So I'm now ready to submit. So I'm gonna left click on the submit button. And the first thing that comes up is the level submission agreement. So please read these terms and conditions before you agree. In a nutshell, it says that you're transferring the rights and ownership of that level to us. And in exchange, if that level is used or a slightly modified version is used, we will list you in the credits for the level designers on one of those future games. So please read through this agreement. Once you agree, click on the I agree box, and then you can start the next step of submission. Now in the next step, you're gonna be asked to put in your name that you wish to be credited if your level is used in a future The Clot Thickens game. So for now, I'll put my name and I'll put my email contact because if my level is gonna be included, I will be contacted about it. Let me get that right. And then the perceived level of difficulty. This is what you think the level difficulty is. I think this one might be maybe on the hard side. Now don't worry because we will adjust what we think the level is once we put it in the game based on the context of all the other levels. So now I can submit. And if there is an issue with the submission, it'll come back with an error of some kind and you can try again. Otherwise my submission is complete. So thank you again for watching this video tutorial. Make great levels, share them, and submit them to us for possible inclusion in a future game. Thanks.